Hey there. Over the past couple months, it has been thrilling to watch disciplined, peaceful protesters in Algeria kick out their 20-year president. But as with many of these Arab Spring-type protests, things are now getting more complicated. The protesters want more change. The regime, obviously, wants less. And many outsiders are now confidently predicting disaster. Disaster is certainly a possibility, but I have higher hopes. Because Algeria is a much stronger country than most people realize. Over the past month, I have covered the disaster in Libya and the extraordinary accomplishments of Tunisia. It's tempting to claim that Algeria could follow in the footsteps of either of these two neighbors, but that undersells both the potential and the risk here. Algeria is a different class of country from either Libya or Tunisia. On the most obvious level, there are 40 million Algerians, not 6 or 12 million. Algeria is a serious regional power, and a successful transition to representative democracy there could change the entire Arab world. I am more optimistic about Algeria than most because its strength and independence makes it almost unique among Arab countries. If I were making this video back before the 2014 oil price crash, I'd probably start a conversation about Algerian power by talking about its massive oil and gas industry. That industry is now more of a liability than a strength. The price crash is one of the main reasons these protests are happening. But Algerian strength is not just about petroleum. It's about history. Algeria's neighbors had a fairly easy transition to independence. Libya's colonial oppressor, Italy, went and lost World War II, making independence in 1951 fairly straightforward. Tunisia had to struggle a bit longer, but the French let them go in 1956 to focus on other priorities. France's main priority at that time was Algeria. Most direct European control in the Middle East and North Africa was brutal, but haphazard and largely pointless. Algeria was different. For starters, its period of oppression was a half century longer than the rest of the regions. From the 1830s, the country had been a French national project, meant to compete with the British Empire's much more impressive feats of colonization and exploitation. Administratively, Algeria was treated as just another part of France, and by the 1950s, over a million Europeans had settled in Algeria. Some of them had been there for generations. The French were never going to let Algeria go easily. Between 1954 and 1962, the Algerians fought the French in one of the most brutal wars of independence the world has ever seen, killing an estimated 300,000 people. Back in 2013, I visited Algeria and I was very impressed. It's like a memory of a vanished world. All the streets are named after mid-20th century revolutionary heroes. It's a place that shouts defiance of the imperial oppressor. You know, uh, people like me. Algeria traditionally doesn't like the United States much. Officially, they were non-aligned, but in their rhetoric and reputation, they were very much on the other side of the Cold War. That may have bugged me 32 years ago, but now Algeria's fierce independence is something that I think the Arab world can use. Every other country in the region is heavily reliant on the United States or its Gulf state colonies. After 9-11, the Algerian regime did start working with the United States in limited counter-terror capacities, but they have always kept the world hegemon at arm's length. Algerians remember their fierce battle for independence. You may be getting the sense that I find the Algerian regime weirdly impressive. I hate to admit it, but I think you may be right. They're the last representatives of the old Arab nationalist dream that held so much promise over a half century ago. Both Egypt and Syria still play lip service to those ideas, but those countries are obviously the playthings of outside powers. Algeria really still is independent. Unfortunately, it took a high degree of brutality both to get them there and keep them there. This brutality is a product of the independence struggle itself. If you haven't seen the Battle of Algiers, you are really missing out. The thinly fictionalized film was made with the participation of some of the fighters just a few years after victory. It doesn't skimp on the evils committed by the French or by the Algerians. It's one of the best films of the 20th century. 
The French were kicked out by necessarily brutal men and women. After independence, unfortunately, that brutality was sometimes turned against the Algerian people. In 1988, in part as a result of the last oil price crash, the Algerian people had had enough. They demanded a say in their own government, and the regime at the time decided to give it to them, setting up multi-party elections. Nobody else in the region was trying something like that back then. Algeria was far ahead of its time. Too far ahead of its time, it turned out. In 1988, Algeria was caught up in a Muslim world shaped by the U.S.-Saudi effort to defeat the Soviets in Afghanistan. That battle was a success, but to make it happen, the Saudis had used their billions to radicalize every Muslim they could with U.S. and Pakistani help. The Algerian elections of 1990 and 1991 were shaped in part by heavily fundamentalist fighters returning from Afghanistan. The rhetoric of the Islamic Salvation Front, or FIS, was extreme and clashed heavily with the more secular leftist worldview of the ruling regime. After winning local elections in 1990, the FIS quickly moved to establish a more fundamentalist lifestyle where it could. When the Islamists won the first round of national elections in 1991, the old revolutionary elite staged a coup. The revolution survived and the people were crushed. It took a decade of blood and at least another 100,000 lives to get them there. The Algerian civil war was horrific, but it also added to Algeria's strength and independence. During the first phase of the Arab Spring back in 2011, Algeria was the only country to sit it out almost entirely. They had already fought those fights and learned those lessons. But the ongoing demise of the petroleum industry requires Algeria to enter a new phase. So far, this new conflict between people and regime has been extraordinarily civilized. Nobody wants to go back to the 1990s. The protesters don't want chaos, they just want change, and they deserve it. The regime and other stakeholders don't want chaos, but they know that they need to change too. The majority of the Islamist parties are vastly more moderate than they were back in the 1980s as well. There is no reason these elements can't all work together to build a better country. I'm filming this video a week ahead of time. By the time it airs, it's possible that the Algerian events will have already fallen into violence. But even if they have, they don't have to stay there. Peace and democracy are very, very possible for Algeria. We know this because peace and democracy already exist in Tunisia, right next door. If Algeria can figure it out, then we will have over 50 million people in two countries living in peace and prosperity right next door to each other. This would provide a stronger basis for power and prosperity for both countries. It would also provide a shining example to the Arab world. Algeria has a brutal history, but it's also an inspiring one. Looking back over the past two months, it's amazing how much has already been accomplished. If Algerians can continue to triumph over their own history and trust each other, there is no limit to what can be accomplished. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And if you want a free essay on a completely different topic, I suggest you click here to sign up for my email newsletter.